All right, so we have finished and posted and saved our painting. We posted it in the demo to Canvas. You know, it's there. It got built in a very almost linear way, right? And even though some of our inspiration is a little bit more out there, this was the AI inspiration, kind of mixing Franz Mark, the German expressionist, doing a Siamese cat, and actually did a really good job. And that inspired some of my colors. And then there's there are these kind of contemporary painters. Now that I have kind of the, the representational painting, I can feel free now to experiment a little bit. So I want to make sure I've saved. And then I'm going to rename it. Yep, so I've got my finished painting. I'll mark it as green. That's the PSD. I have the JPEG of it that I put to canvas. That's here. I'll mark that orange. But that doesn't need to be the end of the story. So what I'm going to do is go to save. And then I'm going to save it to the desktop as a different name. I'm just going to call it experiments. And then for these experiments, I'm going to merge everything, unlock it, except for the backgrounds. So I can just have my final image. Actually, I don't even need to merge. I can just delete all of these. So I just have white as a background and my painting. Now, there are lots of things I can do. But the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my painting. And then I'm going to, let's see, do something weird like this. Because all these are pixels you created, you can now treat them like the pixels that we composited back in our first assignments. And we can play with their hue saturation. We can play with their color balance. We can push them in different ways. We can make them really saturated really dark, really bright. Can make a blue cat. So if I do something like that, this is on a duplicate layer. It feels like a totally different painter, right? Or a different painting style. And then I can do things like selectively with contiguous on select certain sections. I can even, I'm holding down shift, selecting different chunks of paint. I can even turn off contiguous and just select from different areas. And what it's grabbing are actual brush strokes. then I can take that selection and I can move it between layers to my original and then duplicate just those brush strokes like that. Right. So one traditional painting technique that I sometimes use and like is you paint and you try to finish it off and then you sand the painting. And you sand it in some areas more than others, and that kind of uses heat and the friction and the abrasiveness of the sandpaper to knock everything back and smooth it together. But in digital, how can you play with some of these features? Right? You can selectively choose any paint strokes from any layer. So that shows where they are. And then you can do different things to them, like you can make them glow or you can give them a color overlay, which isn't as interesting. I like the glow with a lot of noise. And we can start playing with things like filters and other kind of weird effects. So. What that's doing is selecting certain brush strokes and highlighting them. Right. 
in a way that's very unique to digital. And I have that on a layer on top. And then I can use this layer and kind of blend it in with the blue color. And I can duplicate this. I can right click and rasterize that layer style. So now they're just pixels I can play with. And I can do things like image adjustment invert. Completely change them. Right. Now, everything I've done so far just comes from my own pixels. This isn't compositing anything in. I can play with different blending modes. Kind of like that one. And just because my colors are so opposite, when I merge them together, it just goes to gray. That's what opposite colors do. But you can get very different approaches. So if this is something that's kind of interesting, I can deselect. I can hold down shift, select all those visible layers, turn off the background, then say layer merge layers and put all of that on the top. So now I have kind of these different options to play with. I can also use filters. So if I duplicate, I can go to filter and I can play with certain things like the filter gallery, which will give me kind of artistic effects. I can try fresco. They're all kind of grandiose names for for uh, moderately interesting <laughs> versions of things. This will add a little bit of texture and some brush effects. I can try watercolor, but they can be worth playing with if you have the patience. There we go. And if I say OK, I can then blend that with layers underneath. Just takes a while to process in the browser. That's why it's all experimental. You can turn it into a chalk drawing. So you have all these kind of digital techniques to play with. Let's see what that looks like up close. I think I want to save this because it's getting caught up on me. Okay, so that's that's it up close. So it looks like camouflage. So what I might try is a blending mode of it. Let's lighten it and see what that does to what's underneath. Yeah, I kind of like that. So I'll save this experiment. And that's all just using pixels as they are. You can also offshoot them from each other or offset them. If I invert those colors, that's crazy looking. Oh, I want to do that on a copy. Let's copy it and then invert or merge these together. There we go. So basically, be careless and weird with your own pixels, right? So I can offset it a little bit. I can erase away. A 
let things come through and sink them back in at different opacities. I can fill them with gradients. Crazy gradients, rainbows, whatever. And it starts to get us into this vocabulary of the experiments of traditional painting, which can look pretty out there. Right? But what's interesting is I'm just using all my own pixels to generate these these versions much you know that's not to say I can't just paint directly as well and mix things like hard edged simple brushes and graffiti style at 100% opacity on top of this very nuanced painting that I've started So digital painting has endless potential. And this leads us into our final project where you get to decide how to combine and utilize some of the techniques we've learned in the class. So if we combine this newest technique of digital painting with our oldest technique of compositing, what might that look like? Well, what if I take a painting like this find one that's pretty big <coughs> look at large and in trying to get an interesting finish yeah why not just use this one all right I can bring that into photo P no oh, it's an unknown file format Those fine artists, they're tricky, but I won't let that stop me. Find it in Behance. Oh, maybe that's someone else's. Open image in new tab, see it. Save it to the desktop. It's a JPEG. Bring it into photo P. All right, so now I can composite things I like from this photo using my pixels to kind of pick and choose. So let's kind of fill the screen. Let's uh, control T. I'll rasterize it first, control T. Let's flip it horizontally. Let's crop the whole thing so I'm not wasting too many, too much memory on stuff I'm not going to use. I can just sync it down, you know, behind my image. Or I can use different layers of my image to select out parts of it. And then copy that. Onto my image. Let's try that again. Select a portion of my cat here. Here, let's just go to my original painting. I'm going to select the empty space around the cat. There we go. And then I'm going to say select inverse. So it's everything inside the cat. And then I'm just going to select that from this composite background. And then I can move that up on top. All right. So if I move it on top of everything, it might look like this. And clearly those aren't my marks, but I can use them as kind of texture behind my marks. And with the offset, that can be pretty effective, pretty interesting. <coughs> 